That's not a comic book. Now that's a comic book. Hi everyone, welcome to another episode of Comic Reviews. And I did such a good job setting up my chair, I thought. What happened? I tried so hard to make sure the window wouldn't be seen. Oh, that was the problem. Okay, this will have to be good enough. Uh, Alright, sorry about that. That's just the definition of professional. Uh, yes. God damn it. Just every. Alright, so if I stay up. Sorry, exposure's a bitch, and backlighting's a bitch, and there's nothing I can do about it. So we're just gonna, we're gonna do the show, and just get on with it. Anyway, so yes, this is a special episode of Comic Reviews for Free Comic Book Day, and, um, I want ham. Uh, <laughs> this is the first free comic book day I think that my wife has not worked. Uh, usually she she kind of got a promotion um, this past year, and so usually she was working weekends, and so uh, she, she couldn't make it out to free comic book day, so I was like limited by the... Um... Sorry. I was limited by the uh, the number of books I could get, but I had her with me, and I have three shops in town, so we went to all three shops, got the maximum number per person, uh, of course, making sure to get different books at each store, uh, so that led to a, just a lot of books, and this, this is actually kind of misleading because they're books you can't even see because they're, they're smaller format. But of course, being good local comic book store uh, supporters, we didn't stop there. We also bought trades that they had on special and just stuff that they had in the store. So there's this collection. This, of course, I will not be reviewing today, but I'll go through what I got, got uh, at the end of the episode. Cheers. Anyway, so today on um, this episode of Comic Reviews, we have the Spider-Man issue that Marvel released. I've got a lot of shit on my desk right now. Uh, we have the Avengers issue that Marvel released. Doctor Who, the 13th Doctor. Spawn. Sonic the Hedgehog, Tangle and Whisper, Punchline, Animosity Tales, Buffy and Firefly, Bloodshot, Hope, Dear Justice League, Under the Moon, DC Superhero Girls, DC Superhero Girls, uh, out of the Bottle, what was this first one called? Um, Date with Disaster, Out of the Bottle, DC Superhero Girls, Summer Olympus, and Lady Mechanica. So yeah, there's a lot. Um, and we're just gonna, we're gonna go ahead and get into it. Forgive me, I usually try to make sure the order on the thumbnail is the order in which I read them, but that just didn't seem doable. Okay, so we're going to start with uh, Spider-Man. Um, this is interesting because it's, it's, it's a half and half, which a lot of these uh, free comic book day specials tend to do. They, they tend to try to give you something to set up for an event or whatever they're doing, and then they give you maybe like a little side story or just a preview of something else. And this is this is pretty much that. We have this first story that's about like setting up this carnage, maximum carnage story arc, um, and yeah, absolute carnage, absolute carnage story arc where the carnage symbiote is trying to kill all the other symbiotes, yada yada, whatever. Um, not terribly interested. Uh, it doesn't look awful or anything. It's written by Donny Cates, and from what I've heard is Venom runs really good, but I'm kind of just done with Venom in comics. Um, but then we have a uh, backup story that's... Actually, I guess it's more of like a half-and-half half split, 
And this one I really liked because it is a full and complete story about Peter Parker and Miles Morales having a battle over what the best pizza in New York is. And Peter thinks it's this place he loves in Queens, and Miles thinks it's this place he loves in Brooklyn. Uh, and they're, they're, you know, having a taste test to decide and going all the way across town. Um, and in, that, in the course of that, they run into the Shocker and beat him up. And the Shocker says, what are you talking about? The best place for pizza in town is in the Bronx, uh, in, in Sicily Town. They're like, can you believe this guy thinks the best pizza place is in the Bronx? Uh, and then they go and they get their pizza. Uh, in Brooklyn, and Peter comes to the revelation, no, it's, it's very, very good. But it's not the place in the Bronx that Shocker was talking about. It's not the place in Queens that I grew up at. And your favorite pizza is very much connected to where you, where you had it. And I don't know, it's just like, it's a neat little idea. It's a fun little, like, this is, you know, the, the very particular feel that New York City has. And so that's kind of a cool idea. Um... So yeah, I, I quite like that. That was fun. Nice little fun story. Um, yeah, just go ahead and move on and talk about the Avengers. Um, so this is or the Avengers plus Savage Avengers, which I thought was pretty funny. Uh, this one was very confusing. It like starts off with Tony Stark in prehistoric times. And then there's all this like crazy stuff happening with Namor taking on an oil rig, and it's just like a very set up kind of book. Um, Ghost Rider and Blade are making an appearance with Black Panther, and I don't know. It's just a very set up kind of book that seems like they're they're trying to deal with something. It cuts to, like the galaxy. It's it's just all over the damn place. I had such a a hard time following what the hell was going on with this and uh it ends with tony getting saved by who he thinks is thor but then it turns out to be odin and the heroes of midgard in the early days of of the the you know 10,000 bc or whatever eh i i don't really get into it to be honest um just it did it definitely didn't grab me. It didn't tell a story that had me interested. Like that's the biggest problem I have with a lot of these free comic book day issues, and that's why I'm glad I can go to a, so many stores and get so many books and and get a wider range to experience stuff. Because so many of them just depend on that that gimmick of oh, if we give someone a big cliffhanger, they'll want to read the book. No, if you give someone a big cliffhanger, they'll be disappointed that that's all they got was nothing but a big cliffhanger and setup. You got to tell an actual story. Um, then the next half of the book is actually kind of a prequel to Savage Avengers. Uh, this is just like I, I did a review of that last week on the show, so you can go check out my review of Savage Avengers number one. But like this starts off with Wolverine's connection to the opera singer that we saw killed in the beginning. Um, and I thought he had a kind of a, a neat thing. He's like a big, ritzy, fancy opera singer that's high in demand all across the world. And so he's able to have... He's able to demand, rather, really ridiculous travel expenses. And he uses those to help smuggle mutants in need across the world. And that's how he knows Wolverine. And I thought, like, that was great um i i really really like that i thought that was a, a cool little connection between them um and so that's like your explanation for why wolverine went off on the hunt uh you also get um electra kind of sort of introduced with stick here and she's kind of off on on a wild, wide adventure, and so you just got like it's a little prequel to Savage Avengers, and I thought that was pretty neat. Um, yeah, not much else, just just kind of a cool thing going on right there. Well, Martina says the comic shop I usually go to every year lets you get one of every free comic book day book being offered, so I always would leave with a fat stack of books. That's cool. My shops usually can't. They usually do have to do a limit per person thing um, because they can't afford to get 
you know, obviously the comic shops have to pay for the books, so they can't afford to um to buy the the stacks that you would need to in order to justify that. Um like some of the bigger shops, uh, you know, bigger cities can do. So maybe that's just the difference there. Anyway, let's go ahead and go on. Talk about Doctor Who, the Thirteenth Doctor. So, despite my reservation with um, with Co Titan Comics Doctor Who books and why I dropped them, I will say they know how to do a free comic book day issue. Um, I I usually get these every year, and they're they're usually pretty good. This being no exception, um, I have no clue about anything with the Thirteenth Doctor because I just did not have a ton of motivation to watch the new series yet. So I've not seen anything besides, you know, Capaldi turning into um, I can't remember the actress's name right now. I've really not seen anything else with that, um, and so I, I wasn't sure what to expect going into this. But basically, the Doctor takes her companions to Space Disneyland and everything seems great and crazy. I like that they use the psychic paper. I thought that was pretty fun. Um, yeah, everything seems great and crazy. There's a space roller coaster. There's all kinds of neat, fun things going around. Why did I do it this way? This was silly. Sorry, I'm just readjusting the screens there. Um, there's space roller coaster, there's all kinds of kooky craziness. <laughs> when suddenly the, um, one of the companions decides to play kind of like a carnival game of chance, but it's of course rigged, and he pays the price, um, which is he's teleported away to, uh, holding area with a bunch of other aliens that apparently played this game. And so then the Doctor join, talks with their companions and they devise a plan to rescue him, which is to just cheat back um, using the sonic screwdriver. And so I was like, okay, I guess that works. And then the, the day is saved and everyone's happy. The end. That's, that's really all that happened. I was like, oh, okay. I guess that's the end of it. Um, sure, whatever works. Uh, I I really didn't I, I didn't know what to expect. I thought it, there there'd maybe be more, but no. Which I mean, it was fine. There's um nothing wrong with this, but at the same time, it's just it was it was probably the least Doctor Who-y kind of episode, I guess, or issue I could have imagined. Um, it just felt like pretty basic, uh, but it was better than a lot of the Titan Comics Doctor Who stuff I read. It's interesting here they got a they've got a timeline of all the Doctor Who Titan Comics books. It's crazy to think that it's been going for this long that there are this many volumes out. Ugh, some of them are such a mess though. I think I'm good. Alrighty, let's go ahead and go on. Free comic book day spawn number one. I picked this up because I was like, oh, cool. Todd McFarlane released a spawn free comic book day issue. I'll read that. And you know what he did? But it's just It's just issue one of Spawn. Um I I really didn't know what to think of that. I was like, seriously, they're just doing the first issue of Spawn, just reprinting that for free like twenty years later? 25 years later? That's so strange. Uh, I, I just couldn't believe they did it. I, I thought that was the, the strangest kind of marketing ploy. Now go read 100 issues of Awful. Um, or no, 200 issues of Awful. I, I really don't know why that was the choice made there. I thought that was kind of a, a crazy one. Um, that being said, the first issue of Spawn is the best issue of Spawn from what I've heard. Uh... So yeah, I'll take it. Um, you get Todd McFarlane's art, and that's cool. I mean, it's it's probably a higher quality print and paper quality and stuff than anything you would have bought at the time, so you got that going for you. Uh, yeah, I don't know. I, I enjoyed it for that reason, if nothing else. Um, is, it ain't bad. Uh, it's, I, I'm not going to go out and buy 
299 other issues of Spawn, I'll tell you that much, but I guess this it, it, it's kind of cool that I have this now. That's really all I have to say. I'm not going to... I know too much about where everything leads for Spawn to really talk about the first issue, and I know... Like, I like Todd McFarlane's art, and he's of the opinion that the art matters more than the story, but shit if I care. Uh... Noah Martinez says, I swear they reprinted issue one of Spawn not too long ago because I remember adding it to my poll that particular week. Um, they probably did. I saw something in here, like a, um, oh, where was that? There was an ad for something. Yeah, okay. Uh, Todd McFarlane's Spawn Oversized Vault Edition 2, maybe? Maybe that's what you were thinking of? Uh, or, like, there's an oversized Vault Edition 1, um, I don't know, I, yeah, just whatever, okay, Sonic the Hedgehog, Tangle and Whisper, um, this is no reflection on the, the series as a whole, this is pure, purely me talking about it as a a free comic book day issue. Um, this was terrible as a free comic book day issue. Uh, this is like, I mean, one look look how thin that is. But um, I guess I'm not sure if this is an actual free comic book day issue. It's it's listed as a zero issue. Maybe my store just put it out. Um, but like this felt like reading a wikipedia ar article uh catching me up on what's been happening in the sonic the hedgehog series and i just know that's so uninteresting so like this thing is only what one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven 12. Alright, so this is a 12 page comic. Um, three pages of that. Oh, one, two, three, four pages of that, sorry. Are an actual story with no conclusion. Uh, it's just, it's set up for a story that does not even get concluded. It ends on a cliffhanger. Really bad move in free comic book day terms. Um,. And then the rest of that is just a summary of, I guess, like the first 12 issues or however many issues of the Sonic the Hedgehog book. Um, and I just, no, no thank you, that's bad, that's, that's so boring. Um, I just... I, I was so, like, blown away by just how bad this, this was as, like, a get hooked on it. Because I heard a lot of people say everything was was great about this series and everything. And I, I believe it. Um, this was a terrible way to try to get people into it, in my opinion. I thought this was just really bad formatting and it read like a Wikipedia article. Uh, you could have just, like, put a link to the Wikipedia article in the book and... Now, if I wanted to read a summation of the plot, shit. In 12 pages, I really couldn't have just told a story? Mm. And now everyone in the comments is talking about Sonic the Hedgehog, the movie. I cannot wait. It's going to be so wonderfully bad. It's going to be great. <laughs> All right, let's go ahead and go on and talk about Punchline. Um, this was interesting. I, I really wasn't sure what this was going to be. This one my wife picked up, and I mean, I kind of was just interested in it because of the car on the front, to be honest with you. Um, and so we start off with this woman who's bleeding to death in a graveyard, and she sits down next to someone on a bench. It's like this young artist girl. And... 
apparently superpowers are a thing in this universe that they just pass on from one person to the other. And so woman's like, yeah, I refuse to pass on my powers, and so now I'm about to die. And the girl's like, well, I'll, I'll take them if it'll save your life. And reluctantly, she agrees, and then there's like a sequence of snapping her fingers to change the girl's costumes, uh, which is pretty funny. <laughs> and then saying, all right, fine, we'll meet uh, at this tower for training, because now I'm not going to die because I gave him my powers, and what do you want your costume to actually look like? And that's what it looks like, which is a pretty cool costume design. I like that. It's, it's nice. It reminds me of Overwatch for some reason, even though I haven't played that game. Um, and then old girl goes out and on patrol to try to find a crime to stop, and she does, kind of stumbles her way through it, and then heads back and is told to work on trying to perfect the magical snapping, changing powers thing. Uh, and yeah, that's, that's pretty much the story. She's left like... You know, kind of looking at herself in the mirror and thinking, I can do this. Um, I like it. It's it's fun. Um, this is the, that kind of thing where I enjoyed it. I thought it was well done. It's great as a free comic book day issue because guess what? It actually gives you the story. gives you a real taste of what you'd be getting if you picked up the book. And it's not just teasing an event or, or exposition wall. It's... A story. I'm just not particularly interested in, in reading more of it. You know? I, I And I think that's fair. I think it's like, okay, this gave me a genuine taste of what it was like, and I appreciate it for that. I'm not interested in more. Thank you, but I'm good. And I, I just, I appreciate it for, for making that, that genuine attempt as opposed to trying to do something that feels like a little... A little selfish, or, or not selfish, a little underhanded, or, or uh, disingenuous, I suppose is the word. Alrighty. There's a doggo outside my window. And now he's gone, and I'm forever sad. Alrighty. Let's go ahead and go on to animosity. Um, animosity Tales, rather. So this was interesting. i actually been meaning to get into Animosity for a while, so while I was at my stores looking for stuff to, um, to buy to help support the store, I picked up, from two different stores, Animosity Volumes 1 and 2 by Margaret Bennett. She's one of my favorite comic book writers. I'll kind of read anything by her. And so I was like, oh yeah, I'll grab Animosity since it's there on the shelf and everything. Um, and funny enough, they just also released an Animosity free comic book day issue. Um, I had no idea what the premise of Animosity was until I read this issue. Uh, so that was, that was pretty funny. Um, but yeah, it's, it's kind of neat. It's kind of fun. Uh, animals all gain sentience and the ability to talk. And that kind of causes the apocalypse. And so this is just an issue that takes place in this world and is is all about, like, a girl trying to deal with just the chaos that's going on. Um, so she has a pet fish who is absolutely in love with her, calls her his princess, um, and says that he she is his world, and she uh, decides that oh no, the fish store I go to or work at uh, is is not going to be able to do anything if all the fish are sentient and the world's ending, then they'll just die in their tanks. And so she goes and gathers the fish and takes them to a pond in order to save their lives or whatever, and there's like a, an attack and they have to fight them off and save the day and things get weird at a certain point when she gets thrown in the water and almost drowns and all the fish swim up to the surface and um and breathe in the the air so they can swim back down and uh 
and blow it out around her so she's able to breathe underwater. I have no idea how feasible that is. I'm guessing that's complete bullshit, but I don't know. I guess it's like sonic physics, right? Like you're underwater and you wait for that air bubble to come up and you... Oh. Like, does that actually work? Can someone actually do that and stay underwater long term? Is that a thing? Uh, yeah, so anyway. Uh, so she saves the day. There's an alligator that comes up and eats a guy. It's kind of a cool moment. The art looks really good on there. Uh, and then she's off to, you know, kind of do her thing. Um, and that's pretty much the... Uh, the premise of animosity uh 21 issues wow it's been running for a hot minute then um yeah i don't know i'll give more thoughts when i do my my trade talk episode on it eventually yeah all right go ahead and go on to buffy the vampire slayer and firefly number one um but I admit I'm not a big Joss Whedon fan i watched firefly once when it was on netflix because i'd heard just nothing but buzz about it. And I didn't get what the, the big deal was. I was like, yeah, it's a fucking western in space. Why is everyone freaking out that this got cancelled? It's kind of a dumb idea. Uh, and I mean, not that it wasn't well done, dumb idea, but it's still kind of a dumb idea. Um, and I never watched Buffy uh, even one time, so... This is something my wife picked up as well. Um, the first story is a Firefly story, and it's about this sheriff guy trying to bring a pie to someone who's a, an Alliance soldier in the war. Um, and he gets attacked because he's not a very good sheriff, and she's a terrible farmer, and yada, 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 yada. Uh, she gets recruited by the Alliance again to to come hunt down brown shirts. Eh, nope, not reading more of that. Um, then we get two Buffy stories. Uh, one of them setting up Angel, where she goes to like a magic shop and kills a vampire and asks for a thing, but then as soon as she leaves with the thing, Angel shows up and asks for the same thing, and yeah, I, I didn't care, not reading that. Uh, and then there's another one that I actually did kind of like where Buffy's working at a fast food place and asks for a break before she throws herself into a deep fat fryer. I thought that was pretty good. Uh, while she's outside on her break, she sees a vampire attacking two people and it's like, oh, you're, the vam you're a vampire. And he's like, oh, you're a slayer. I've heard word of you. Yeah, what kind of word? That you work at Tooniverse. Well, I can't let that leave the parking lot. And she kills the vampire, and that's how she meets her friends from the show. And then she goes back to work. Um, that one I liked a little bit more, but still, I just thought it was... Eh, nope, not reading that. Um, if you're into it, I thought it was fine. I didn't think anything in, it, anything in here was bad. I appreciated that like at least one of these stories was a complete story... Uh, the other two are, again, that like whole setup y thing without any real payoff unless you go buy the official book. But one of them was, was just a, a nice, good, complete story, and I appreciated that. So, got that going for it. Alrighty. Go ahead and go on to Bloodshot. Um. People have been asking me to read Valiant comics for the longest time, and anytime I give it a shot, I just don't care. Um, and so, yeah, this is interesting. Uh, Bloodshot is going around just beating the shit out of people. Um, they're like cyber cultists who see themselves as inferior and see Bloodshot as a god because he's apparently millions of nanorobots working together. Uh, and... Bloodshot kills him. Um, really, the only thing I liked about this Bloodshot story was the art. It's not that the story was bad, and again, I appreciate that it's an actual complete story. 
It actually lets you in on some stuff. It actually, you know, get, makes a point, and it doesn't depend on you to read the other stuff to make it work. It sets up other stuff, but it doesn't depend on reading that. This does stand alone. So I appreciated that part of it. But otherwise, I just thought this was boring. Uh, I just I had no interest in it. Um, and then there's another story. What is this called? Fallen World. Uh, that's like about the Earth thousands of years in the future when... New Japan crashes upon it and civilization has degraded and yada 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 uh, I, I guess it was it's called Fallen World Prelude and so you don't have to read it anymore I guess it kind of works as just its own story um, but I, I didn't care enough about it without the other stuff that it's supposed to go into. It's one of those cases of not bad, but I just, it had no impact on me. It, it, it really, it meant nothing to me. Um, to be perfectly honest, I probably just wouldn't have read that. It, if like I saw it as new number one on the shelf, I wouldn't have read it. Uh, I am just, it's just, it was in the book, so I read the whole issue. Go ahead and go on and talk about Hope uh, with, written by Dirk Manning, uh, with art by Kaylin Smith, if that's correct. Yeah, fully illustrated and lettered by Kaylin Smith. So this was interesting. Uh, this is kind of a world where people with superpowers are kind of becoming a thing. Uh, they call them ultras. But they're treated kind of like the X-Men a little bit, where some people like them and a lot of people hate them. Uh, so we see this female ultra saving a ambulance, and then it cuts to this family riding in the car. And the dad's talking all kinds of shit about ultras, and he's not paying attention to the road, and he swerves across the lane and hits a semi. And the wife rips her seatbelt. Um, and catches her daughter in the air because the wife is an ultra. Uh, the husband's non-responsive, and she's trying to get someone to call the call for help, call an ambulance. Um, but they're all just on their phones recording everything, which is very poignant uh, in this day and age. And she says, "Why aren't you calling for help?" And this guy says, "Uh." you're an ultra aren't you the help um and so she has to pick up the car and carry the car with her husband in it and her daughter all the way to the hospital and just um begging them to to help and she's like why wouldn't anyone call for help she's absolutely broken by it cut to her in a isolated room in the hospital um when her family doctor comes in and try to talk to her and he's just trying to let her know, hey, listen, everyone knows about you now. Uh, this is this is happening. Um, we all know that you're the ultra known as Hope. And so things are about to change. Your husband's in a coma, but your daughter's fine. And then she goes, well, I need to go see her right now. Um, and she tries leaving the room, but then security shows up and... The, her daughter's been moved and then Child Protective Services is there and says, we moved your daughter because she needs protection from you. And that's like the, the big cliffhanger moment. And I was like, you know, here's an interesting case. This issue does a really good job of introducing you into the world, introducing you to the characters, creating a situation that is genuinely dramatic and makes you want to read more. And, and really... It, it does want you to go out and buy the the comic, but it's not dependent on it in in the way that some of these big setup y event comics are. Um, that just feels like a normal comic book ending to me. I've I've read plenty of cliffhanger comic book endings, and I don't necessarily have a problem with a cliffhanger in a free comic book day format, but this just really worked as a cliffhanger that actually is saying something that's actually working towards something. Um, 
and it's just it's it's you know genuine drama and not just like oh look at the craziness and this character is doing another thing and we're setting up this whole world this just nice contained thing it's got this very personal attachment to it and i thought it was a, a really good story so I, I really appreciated this one this was this was pretty good um let's see here is hope number one already out or is it like got a first volume out or something Lots of ads in the back. Uh, they, they got it on social media. Um, I might have to check it out and see if I can find issue one or, or two or something online um, and and read it and see what, what comes out of it. But yeah, really nice, strong uh, presentation here. I was, I was pretty happy with this one. Alrighty, let's go ahead and move on and talk about Dear Justice League, the free comic book edition. Um, DC released a lot of these this time around. Um, don't I have another one somewhere? I thought I had, I don't know, I'm almost done. Wow. It took me three hours to read. It's going to take me less than an hour to talk about all these. <laughs> should give you a sense of how much content there is in a lot of these free comic book day issues. Um, but yeah, I mean, that's that's three books from DC that I picked up that are these little, like, um, imprints with a DC Zoom and DC Ink. Um, and they, for some reason, they can't be normal comic book size because that'd be too damn convenient. <laughs> That's my, that's, that will be the one old man complaint I will make about them. That is it. Yeah, we'll get uh, Dear Justice League. And this is a cute one. Um, this is definitely a preview. But I did think it worked a bit better uh, than, than a lot of your typical previews. Because it's just, it's a preview of something that's a lot more um shorter in scope so it's able to give you like two completed stories in a preview format and if you want more you can go get the novel um or well you can get the novel in august at least so we got two stories here one with superman one with hot girl uh and the first one's all about how powerful and great and strong superman is um, and then this kid sends him a message on social media. Dear Superman, you're super, right? I mean, it's right there in your name, but are you super all the time? What I mean is, have you ever messed up? I mean big time, because I have. Big time. You're non-super fan, Ben. And you see this kid standing in his yard, and he's obviously, whoo! That's, that's going to be quite the lecture when his parents get home. And he sends it off to Superman, and Superman reads it, and is thinking, nah, I mean, I'm Superman. And then he, flying, looking at his phone, bonks into a building, which just sets off a shitstorm, and this was really fun. Uh, this is, like, the kind of charming superhero stories I quite like. So, that knocks a window washer off their thing. Superman has to go and save them, but then the window washer's bucket of water falls and almost lands on an old lady walking on the street. But she manages to move right at the last second, but bumps a guy into traffic. The guy slips on a pencil, falls down in the road. A uh, bicyclist almost hits him, but swerves out of the way in the last minute, but right into a truck. And Superman has to save the bicyclist. But then the bicyclist's tire that got hit by the truck starts bouncing down the way and it knocks into a dog walker. And the dog walker uh, loses all her dogs. And they go off and run into a butcher's shop. And just shit just keeps getting crazier. And Superman's just going around trying to fix all these problems that his, his little moment of inattention caused. And you just get a great jump cut there of all of the... the chaos caused by the um this one little accident and then superman just looks all disheveled and the cop writes him a ticket for texting while flying and so he goes up to a building and 
sits down on his phone and says, Dear Sam, yeah, sometimes I've screwed up. Big time. I thought that was pretty good. Um, I thought that was a, a pretty fun, sweet little story and, and just makes Superman a little more relatable than, than some people like to write him as. So I thought that was a pretty cute one. Uh, and then the next one didn't do as much for me. It's about Hawk Girl beating up a random alien. Uh, and then she goes home to answer some emails. And someone emails her. It's like, Dear Hawk Girl, Hawks eat small mammals. Do you eat small mammals? And Hawk Girl looks at her pet hamster. And her hamster looks back, confused. And Hawk Girl walks over to the cage. And the hamster looks back, scared, terrified, as Hawk Girl opens it, not knowing what to expect, and then he gets food. Uh, and her na her hamster's name is Hamlet. That's cute. Uh, and then she types back, no, I feed small mammals. Um, and, and Hamlet is stuffed. So that was cute. That was fun. Uh, I didn't like it as much because I didn't think it, it really... The Superman one was fun because it had a take on Superman. The, the Hawk Girl one is just super, like... Okay, uh, she she feeds a cute animal or, or something. I don't know. It just it felt very kind of grasping at straws because it didn't really have anything to say to Hawk Girl. Uh, what are some of the other questions that the other superheroes are getting asked here? Uh, Cyborg, what is your favorite video game? Does Aquaman smell like fish? Does Superman ever make mistakes? Has Batman ever been the new kid in town? Was what was Wonder Woman's eleventh birthday like? Um, that's cute. I like that. Those, those are fun ideas. So yeah. And the next one is Catwoman Under the Moon. Um, this was interesting because, like, this is a very like four little kids kind of thing. This was more for like middle age, uh, young adult kind of stuff. Uh, it's about Catwoman who's staying at home with her mother and her mother's boyfriend who's drunk, um, and he's, he's not directly abusive, but you definitely get that impression. So it's either they can't get away with directly showing it, like him being physically abusive to Catwoman, or Selena Kyle, um, or it's just in such a way that that they uh, they don't want to show that kind of abuse. Um, but then Catwoman finds a uh, little kitten lost and abandoned, and she takes it home and hides it in the closet, and yada yada yada. Starts opening up, feeling really good about herself, feeling really happy, and things are going so well. But you you still get this impression that like she's she's not an angel or anything for her for it because we see her just cop something off of a student at school um and i thought that was pretty good uh, i i thought that was a, a nice little um little touch to add there so yeah she um she goes home and her step dad or her mom's boyfriend i guess finds the cat and gets really pissed about it so he takes the cat and puts it on top of a door frame and then shoves Selena in a closet and locks it uh, to teach her a lesson and her mom is unable to let her out because she's afraid of the, the boyfriend um, waits till he passes out to let Selena out and that's when and the cat was able to stay up there the whole time until it saw Selena come out and then it moved and fell and hurt itself and died um so that was a bit of a downer ending <laughs> to, to say the least uh yeah I hate Cinders for being weak, then I love her with every bit of me, and I hate myself for being weak, for allowing myself to love her when my love couldn't keep her safe. Never again. That was, that was a bit of a downer ending, very Batman-esque style story right there, so I, I did quite like this. Um, is this out right now? Hmm. 
Hmm. I don't know. Let me... Does it say it's out right now, or is this coming out? I'm coming out. I can't tell. Oh, yeah. On sale now. All right. Uh, so I might... I might have to go pick this up, because that was... That, that's got the markings of a really good Catwoman story. <laughs> Uh, origin story, and I've never read a Catwoman origin I liked, uh, so I might, 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 might just have to go check that out. And Philip Gutton says, why do comics kill cats for the sake of shock all the time? It's, it's that bad guy thing of, like, you could, I've, I've seen audiences watch someone, like, kick a child or, or just be awful to a child and like they don't bl b bat an eye but like you kick a dog and suddenly <gasps> everyone hates them uh, you, you hurt an animal and you're like completely irredeemable like that's that's the thing if if star wars um rise of skywalker opens with with ben solo kicking a puppy it's over ben demption is done uh, that's, that's the thing you gotta remember. Like, can anyone think of an example from any media where someone was awful to an animal and then they ended up being the good guy? Or they ended up being okay? And not being awful in, in the end? It's just writing shorthand, man. Hurts animals, bad person, completely irredeemable. Murders someone, actually, their soul can be saved. <laughs> it's classic, it's classic. Alright, let's go ahead and go on and talk about DC Superhero Girls. we got a lot of those to talk about here. But we'll start with Date with Disaster. Uh, so these are part of the Zoom imprint. Um, and I liked them well enough. Uh, each individually, but they all are just excerpts. They're not actually a story. Um, so, like, these two were excerpts. This is definitely, like, chapter one. This was definitely, like, okay, it's a standalone thing in and of itself, so we can kind of combine it and, and sell it on its own. Uh, each of these is just, like, the setup to a wider graphic novel in the, the DC Superhero Girls series. Um, I'm like, okay, sure, why not? But at the same time, if you're going to publish three versions of this for free comic book day, why the fuck not just put them out and uh, just put out one complete story? I mean, the, the entire... I guess I can't complain too much given like 90% of DC Superhero Girls media is available on YouTube for free right now. You should go check it out. It's, uh, er, well, media in this format. They changed the art style and, and put the show on Cartoon Network. Um, but, like, 90% of that's all available now, so you can go check it out anytime you want. And so I guess they have to try to make money off of this branding in one form or another. But, eh. Um... Man, maybe this is old, because this is saying only in theaters, <laughs> this movie, like, almost a year old now, only in theaters July 27th, so maybe this is a bit of a reprint, but whatever. Uh, so this first one is about Batgirl, you know, setting up to go on a, go to a uh, dance with Cyborg, um, and how her dad's kind of annoying to her a little bit, because he's you know, very overprotective, um, but then it looks like he's got his own girlfriend, and then there's also hijinks going on with the, uh, the city's mayor kind of covering up some kind of experiments at, at Star Labs. So yeah, I don't know. It's fine, it's fun, it's fine, it's fun. Um, again, this all feels like the first act of of a wider book is just the problem with it um and that's gonna be what i say about the other two though i did like those a little bit more just because more happens in that first act 
Uh, and so, yeah. This one, I don't know, the idea that Jim Gordon's gonna start dating again. I don't know, you couldn't... You didn't have... <sighs> Shia Fontana didn't have the balls to, to have Gordon in an affair with uh, Sarah Essen. Um, come on. That was like the best. <laughs> oh, man. Anyway, uh, yeah, I don't know. So I didn't really have much to say about this one, but it's fine. Let's go ahead and talk about uh, DC Superhero Girls uh out of the bottle. This is another just against the first chapter. Um, this one I liked more because like the the superhero girls are doing their art projects for school, which is to make a comic book, which I thought that was pretty funny. Um, and so like we open reading Katana's comic about her stopping the Mad Hatter from doing evil against Crazy Quilt. But then uh, she takes the, the hats that Mad Hatter stole back to Crazy Quilt, who's getting an award, and she gets the award for being so stylish, and Crazy Quilt gets dragged away. It's like, you're right, she deserves it. So you immediately get the sense that this isn't real, and then you see, yeah, it's all the, the girls writing their own comics, and Wonder Woman sucks at it, which is kind of funny. Um... You wouldn't expect that. Uh, but then Miss Moon, so Enchantress, says, Hey, just, uh, you know, don't, um, don't touch my special magical paints, which set up all the way. Um, we also get to read Supergirl's comic, which just very cutesy, kind of almost chibi art style. Uh, kind of a Wonder Woman origin slash stopping Killer Moth from committing evil while riding ponies and stuff. I like Batgirl's bat, bat and a corn pony. I thought that was pretty funny. Um, so yeah, they uh, they saved the day in that little fictional comic, and then Wonder Woman's got just the poorest art style of them all, and she can't figure anything out. But Harley Quinn has used the magical pants, and it looks like her creation is going to go off and cause all kinds of havoc and trouble. Um, anyway, yeah, it's, this one was fine. This one, I, I, again, I liked it more because it's got like these little mini stories in it that, that kind of just work on their own. Uh, so I appreciated that. And, and so I think this is probably the best one out of the three DC Superhero Girls shorts that got released. Um, so then this one, uh, Summer Olympus, uh, is the DC Superhero Girls being all excited because it's about to be summer, um, and then suddenly Wonder Woman is invited by her dad, Zeus, to Olympus. <sighs> you know, I defended the Zeus origin for a long time and I, I think it works in the context of the new 52 but everyone was telling me no that's not the problem it's going to get adapted to everywhere else and that's just how everyone's going to remember it and the other origins better and I was like no no that's not going to happen and you're right they were all right everyone was right I'm wrong I'm sorry uh, so yeah Anyways, she's invited by her dad, Zeus, to spend the summer on Olympus, and then she goes around to all the uh, other DC superhero girls to see if... and boys... to see if they will come to Olympus with her for the summer, and it's just like a series of kind of funny rejections. One thing I do like about this this format of the show is its, it's humor was a lot more dialogue and situational-based, kind of more like a sitcom... Um, and I really liked that. Like, so Hermes is kind of sitting around waiting, um, for Diana to make her decision so he can go tell Zeus. Whoops. Uh, and he says, until your reply is ready, I shall return my attention to this exquisite beverage I procured from your local servant at the Capes and Cows Cafe. And Diana has to be like, those aren't servants. Things don't work that way off Olympus. You paid for it, right? Um, I shall be right back. 
don't forget the tip. I, I, that's just cute. That's fun. I've seen like clips and, and such from the, the new Superhero Girl show when, when they change the animation style. It's on the back, maybe? It's not somewhere. No, no. Uh, did they... Why did they post it? I remember seeing somewhere in the new art style. Um, anyway. Like, ever since they changed the art style, it is very much more like a kind of typical animated gag cartoon kind of stuff. Very, in in uh, a lot of ways, similar to Teen Titans Go, I feel. Uh, but, like, this kind of stuff was, was funny and cute, and so I enjoyed that from this series. Um, and then, like, that kind of just cues a montage of Wonder Woman asking everyone if they'll go with her to, uh, to Olympus for the summer, and everyone keeps saying no, except for Bumblebee, and then when they get there, um... There's a big gust of air, and it looks like there's going to be drama on Olympus. Who could guess? I I like that quite a bit. Um, it was an okay one. Again, again, I feel like this was probably the strongest, just because it gave the most variety and and more of a completed is ish story. Uh, still ends on a cliffhanger. Still is just like this is a preview. Go buy the actual thing. Which I don't think is the ideal of free comic book day, but what can you do? Uh, Alright, final book, and then I'll talk about what other shit I procured. Let's talk about Lady Mechanica, um, free comic book day special. So this is a thing I've, I've seen a little bit here and there on whenever I go to the store, and I've never really picked it up because I'm not super into the steampunk thing, but uh, Haley kind of likes that aesthetic a lot more. Um, and so I was, and so she was curious and she picked this up. And I gotta say, I do quite like the art in here, though it is kind of more typical, uh, comic book, um, art of, you know, kind of, what's the word I want here? Uh, da, 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 da. Word, come to my head. Exploitative of the female body kind of stuff. Um... You know, like, she's got a waist that's health in there, and her midriff and stuff, and she's just, oh, make sure to have my cleavage boob window kind of thing, but then we got to keep the steampunk aesthetic there, so and just, it's whatever. Uh, I'll give it this, they're not boob pockets, so that works. Um, anyway, so she's... We get, we get like, three stories here, which is kind of cool. One of them's more of a complete story uh, that that still ends on a cliffhanger, but, again, similar to the Hope issue. It ends on a cliffhanger, but it's not it's, it's not all about the cliffhanger. Um, and then we get two that are, like, previews of, uh, of other completed books. So Lady Mechanica is um, kind of on a rooftop and she's got this cool steampunk rifle and she's waiting to find this monster that everyone's been talking about and other people are hunting for and so she spots it running and goes and hits it with a sleep dart and starts to fight it and says don't make me kill you uh, and then it says well please don't and then she has a whole conversation with it because she didn't expect it to be you know intelligent enough to talk and she notices it has mechanical limbs, too, like she does, and she doesn't know what to really make of that. Um, and then it, like, gives a big reveal that it knows her. It has... the master created her, and she was its... she was the master's favorite. And then, just as she's about to get an answer, the thing's head gets blown off by the evil of man. Um... Who are, who are hunting the creature. Uh, and so she beats the shit out of the guy that killed the thing. Um, and then there's this evil doctor, and he pays everyone else to try to capture her because he's got questions. Um, and then she beats the shit out of them and shoots the guy's leg off uh, and, and gives him a big fuck you. Um, consider yourself warned, Lord Blackwood. When next we meet, if you happen to be so foolish, I will not be as merciful. Cheers. 
Um, so again, that that one ends on kind of a cliffhanger, like, oh, what's her origin? Who is this mysterious master the the monster was talking about? So it's got that cliffhanger thing, but again, it just feels like a more complete story. It feels like it's it's setting stuff up and it's giving you a preview. Of, that's the way to express it. This feels like a preview of the world and the the story it's setting up, and and the story it, the the wider story it wants to tell, but it's a preview with some meat on it. Whereas the, a lot of these like more shallow uh, free comic book day issues just kind of give you this this quick smattering of like, oh look where Thor is, look where Iron Man is, look at all this crazy shit that's happening. Go buy this next big event. No. Um, like, you, you can't sell it all on the spectacle. you got to give it some, some true grit, some, some meat, some character. And this does. This gets me invested in a way, even though it is a preview for, like, things to come that, that other stories don't. Um, and then it, like, hey, look, this is all the Lady Mechanica stuff you can buy. And then we get some excerpts from, uh, some of those stories. And those are cool. Um... And yeah, this actually kind of makes me want to go out and buy some of this. You know, I, I, I'd seen Lady Mechanica and stuff, but I was like, ah, I'm not really into the steampunk thing, and the the way she's drawn seems a little bit exploitative. But the the way this is written, you know, it um it actually doesn't look half bad. It's it's got kind of like this mystery, kind of Sherlock Holmesy feel to it in in a steampunk format, like. We see a murder happen, and then a uh, police inspector goes to Lady Mechanica's house and is like, So, I have, a, I have a matter for you most urgent. And she's like, Oh, really? What's that? And this man was killed. Oh, okay, so you need my help solving his murder. Every witnesses say it was you that killed him. And that's like, Oh, shit! Uh, and she has, why do you care for a spot of tea, Inspector? I suspect this might take a while. Um, so, yeah, I don't know. That's, like, kind of a cool thing that actually does kind of make me want to go check it out. And, and I appreciated that about it. Um, I don't know. It's a, it's a hard maybe. I'll give it that. Okay. So that was it for my free comic book day reviews this time around. I think we had a pretty good year. No coloring book this time. Damn it. Uh, but yeah, pretty pretty good size stack and stuff. I had fun with those. All right, now let's talk about the shit that I bought and Haley bought, uh, along with everything that um, that came out. Volume 3 of Magneto by Colin Bunn. This is Shadow Games. Because I had Volume 2 uh, in my big stack of stuff. Marvel Knights Fantastic Four 1, 2, 3, 4 by Grant Morrison, Ja Lee, and Jose Villarubia. I think I got that one right, actually. Uh, Animosity Volumes 1 and 2 by Margaret Bennett and Rafael de la Torre. Um, very excited for those, you know, coming up down the line. Thanos Wins by Donnie Cates uh, with art by Shaw. Who's Shaw? Why is it just one last name? Donny Cates, Jeff Shaw uh, is the artist on this. So this is like the origin stuff for, for Cosmic Ghost Rider and, and someone... Like, I, I remember just seeing the title, Thanos Wins, and thought, eh, no, no, I'm interested in that. That sounds dumb. Um, and I mentioned that in the Geeky Gentleman Thanos video. Someone said, no, Thanos Wins is by Donny Cates. And I was like, oh, wait, shit, what? So now... I've got a completely different perception of it, and it sounds super interesting. So I'm going to have to get that and add it to the pile. Also got a pretty good deal on this for just five bucks. Predator, Pray to the Heavens. Um, the puns with Predator books. It's just an untapped world of potential. Um, so I'm excited for that. That looks, that looks pretty good. Uh, nice art from what I was seeing in it. Uh, at least good covers. So we'll see what this becomes. Um, even if it's bad, you know, it's five bucks. 
Aw, that's not, that's not too bad. And then I also got Ant-Man and the Wasp, Lost and Found. Uh, this is by Mark Wade, really? Mark Wade wrote Nadia? Yeah, shit. Mark Wade and Javier Garon. G-A-R-R-O-N. Garon? Garon? Um, so this is the Scott Lang Ant-Man and the Nadia Wasp. So uh, after reading Unstoppable Wasp, I was really excited and decided to pick this up. So that might might work its way higher up the stack just because Unstoppable Wasp kind of put me in a mood. Um, and then also Haley bought this, which is Supergirl, an adult coloring book, uh, with just a bunch of really famous images of Supergirl, I guess, and she's, she's going to color them. Uh, that's cool. I like that idea. Um, those are fun. I wonder if there's any Amanda Connor art in here. I imagine Amanda Connor would be a fun uh, artist to try to do coloring for, because she's just got such a a wide open style by comparison to a lot of other artists. Um, but yeah, some, some cool stuff in here. Uh, so I'm sure Haley will enjoy that. She likes this kind of thing. Uh, yeah, a lot of variety, a lot of different artists. It's not just like the, like the Jim Lee Hush or the, the Harley Quinn Mad Love didn't really make any sense to me because it's just, okay, I guess just break out the comic and do it, you know, page by page. Um, this just seems more open and more fun, which is cool. Uh, anyway, yeah, so that's a neat one. Um, and that will do it for this episode of Comic Reviews, everyone. Thanks very much for coming out and, and hanging out with me while I talked about all my free comic book day stuff. I hope you had a good time this free comic book day. hope you saw some cool stuff, got some good books, had a good time. Everyone, thanks very much for watching. Till next time, bye!